mater. Uh, I do have some bad news, though. I, I don't want to be the one to break the news, but I'm pretty sure somebody stole Pray Herald. But the good news is they put a really nice building in its place. So. But it's good to be here. I'm so glad that TEDx has come here. This is a true know your audience moment. Um, I'm here in a room. It's a packed room full of people who chose to give up their entire day to sit through eight hours of presentations with limited bathroom breaks. And uh, I'm going to tell you that people don't like listening to presentations. So, uh, no, but this is a special, it's a special situation. And I think you know that. Because you all came here knowing that you were going to leave different. You all came here knowing that at the end of the day, you'd have some new ideas. You'd be inspired towards actions. You'd understand some things better. And you knew that the messages you were going to hear were going to be delivered with, with clarity and concision and dynamism. And so you said, yeah, eight hours of presentation, sign me up. <laughs> but we all know that most of the time, if somebody said, hey, would you like to listen to my presentation? You'd say, uh, I think I'd actually rather do anything else. <laughs> right? Because most of the time, presentations don't work. What I want to talk about today is why that is. Why most of the time, our way of giving presentations, our way of building presentations, is a broken way. And then I want to talk about a different way of approaching how to build and create a presentation. A way that's completely different. A way that's geared towards success. And then I want to talk about a very simple way that you can start transforming the presentations you give from a broken system to a functional system. But first I want to talk about that broken system. This is how most of us think of presentations, right? This is the image. Content. Lots of content. Items with sub-items. All this stuff that I have to share with my audience. And you know, some of us will do a little bit better job. We'll dress it up a little bit with some aesthetics. You know, I'm gonna, it's going to be graphically balanced and minimal. Okay? And some people say, I don't want that visual clutter. I'm just going to rely on my own charisma to deliver this verbally. But at the end of the day, they're all in the same category because they've all decided that the way I'm going to do this presentation is that I've got this chunk of information that I need to, to say or show all these people. And if I say or show it, I've succeeded. And if they think I'm super smart, then I've really succeeded. Okay. Well, I want to show you an image of a different system, the new and better system, a system that's geared towards success. Because that, as all the professors in this room know, just because an audience sees it, hears it, touches it, tries it, is no indication of whether or not they understand it. And is no indication of whether or not they'll actually start acting differently. Right? So I'm going to show you a diagram, and I'm going to warn you, it's very complex. And I, if you're taking notes, don't strain your wrist or anything. It's, it's complicated. It's taking years to develop, but it's, it's worth at least seeing. So here, here's the diagram. <laughs> okay, it's very simple. Okay. This is a presentation. This is a presentation at its core. Because what is a presentation? But it's taking your audience from one place to another. It's taking them from that red square to the green square. The red square represents what they bring in before you've even begun. All their biases, all their the things they know, and their opinions and their preferences. And the green square is where you'd like them to be, the new opinion you'd like them to hold, the new understanding of the content you're delivering, the renewed fervor to start acting in a different way. This is an entirely new way of approaching a presentation for most people, even though they may not realize it, because they're not actually setting that goal for themselves. And that's what the green square is. It's a goal. Your goal is to get them there. If you don't remember any other sentence that I say today, remember that. Get them there. So what does a goal look like for a functional presentation? A great way to start a goal is to say, I want them to fill in the blank. This is the one part that's about you. Because you're giving the presentation. You're making the decisions on what is going to come out of your mouth, what's going to happen on stage. What do you actually want to do? What do you want to change? We've heard a lot of people talking about, I want to change the world, and you can change the world. How do you want to change your audience at the end of your presentation? You have to determine that. Whether you're selling a product, I want them to buy this product. Or I want them to understand colonial American mercantilism. Whatever it is, whatever your field is. 
I want them to feel this way, do this thing, take this action. That's your goal. That's about you. There's another part that's not about you. We transform the goal. And I should add that it should be an achievable challenge. Okay? It's easy to set a goal that you can, that you can easily achieve. Set something that could actually happen. In the course of your 10 minute, 15 minute, 5 minute presentation, what opinion could you actually change? What feeling could you actually change it for what amount of people? Figure that out and tell yourself, I think I can do it at this level. I really have to work at it. And you're setting yourself up for a great presentation. We convert the goal into a big idea. And this is where it becomes about your audience. The goal is where you want them to be. We convert it into a, a big idea. By show of hands, how many have seen the film Inception? OK, so most of you. If you haven't seen the film, a big concept in it is the idea of planting an idea in someone's head, a strategic and simple idea, so simple that they embrace it themselves, but so strategic that if they embrace that idea, they take a chain of, of actions that result in your desired goal. That's really what a great presentation does. Because your audience doesn't care what you want. They don't care about the goal that you've set for yourself. I'm selling a product. I want them to buy my product. Well, of course you want me to buy your product. It's your product. <laughs> but what about me? What do I want? So we convert, the big we convert the goal into the big idea. And the big idea is something like, this product will make every day simpler. And if you actually believe that idea, you're going to buy the product. But it's because it's what you believe. It's not because what I want you to do. It's not because of what I've said. It's because of what you believe. Of course, the challenge then is how do we get them there? How do we cover the gap between the red square and the green square? This is the way most presentations try and get us from the red square to the green square. You've been in these presentations, and you've checked your email or Facebook at least five times over the course of them. When we don't decide that we need to get our audience to a green square, we may not even get there. We're going through our content. We're covering what we need to cover. And just like if we're being led by someone down a path, people get discouraged. They have no idea where they're headed. As you can see in the, in the image, you're going frequently completely against the direction of the green square. And along the way, you're going to get discouraged. And around one of those bends, when it seems like you've turned another corner that isn't headed in anywhere, you'll zone out. You'll sit down. You'll flip out your phone. Or you'll start thinking about lunch. And the presenter has lost you. We need to start thinking about that green square over the course of the entire presentation. So that instead of that, it looks like this. Everything you do in your presentation needs to be focused towards getting them to that eventual goal. This is a great time to use a phrase that I like to use. Please feel free to use it too the next time you're on a team with someone who says, I love speaking and I'll just wing it. You're not there to be interesting. You're there to be effective. Now, being effective often involves being interesting. But if you've made it your goal to be interesting, I don't want to go to your presentation. Okay? And honestly, even if it is interesting, what have you changed? What, what world are you producing, to talk in these ethereal uh, TEDx terms? I mean, at the end of the day, what has changed for your audience? Nothing, if you've set out to be interesting. But if you've set out to actually change a mindset and change the way they feel, you've set yourself up for success. One final thought, the rule of three. Humans love the rule of three. It works in comedy. It works in literature. It works in memory. Consolidate your ideas to three concepts. So in other words, in your path to get them from that red square to the green square, how can you consolidate everything you need to say into three ideas so that they are essentially beginning on that red square, stepping to the first point, the second point, and the third point, until finally you've gotten them to step onto the green square, they've embraced the idea, and they own it. And then you've actually begun to start changing things. Thank you so much.